to start this collar off, I have my work set up on my jig. I did a two strand double cow's hitch. If you're not familiar with how to do a double cow's hitch, I will leave a link below. I'm also doing something a little bit different today. I actually have my Biothene adapter all hooked up and I want to see um, how easy it is to work with like this because you have to unscrew your Biothene adapter and then screw it back on which isn't really that big of a deal but I thought maybe I would try something different. I don't know, maybe I'm feeling lazy today. But I wanted to try and see how it um, handles with the uh, jig. We'll see what happens. Um, for the double cow's hitch I am using uh, black. I have two strands of black. One is going to be a little bit longer than the other. I'm using the longer one for the cow stitches. So to start this collar, I'm going to be using the red first. And I am using my pericord needle. And I'm going to just slip it through the cow's hitches. Oops. Just like that, and I'm going to pull this through and pull it to the middle. The next color that I'm going to be adding is white, and I'm going to do the same thing, just slip it through those two cow's hitches, and then pull that one also to the middle. The next color that I'm going to be adding is my other red cord, and instead of going through the double cow hitches, both of them. I'm only going to go in between these two middle stitches on the top. So just the two in the middle, and I'm going to pull this cord also to the middle. And the last cord that I'm going to be adding is the other black cord. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go through these two middle stitches just like I did with the red and pull that cord also to the middle. So to start this collar off we are going to start with the black pericord that you did the, the body of your collar with. We're going to start off with the one cord that is on the right side and we're going to go underneath the first cord and then over the second cord. So you're going up the middle and then over that second cord. So take the black on the right side and you're going to go underneath up through the middle and then over that second cord and you're going to make a loop. Now you're going to take your left cord, you're going to go underneath the cord that you just worked and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to go underneath the first cord and over that second cord. So you're going to go underneath, up through the middle and over that second cord and you're going to make a loop also. So it's kind of like you got like a triangle here. Next you're going to take your bottom red and you're going to go underneath all of your work and up through the middle. So you're going to go underneath all of your work up through the middle on the right side. And then that loop that you just made, you're going to go down through that loop on the right side. Do the same on the left. Go up through the middle, sorry, go underneath everything up through the middle and then down that left loop. Take your white now and with the white we're going to go over your work. You have these two horizontal black strands. You're going to go around those two horizontal strands. Down through the middle, you're going to go around those two strands and you're going to come up through the middle on your right side of the working cord. Do the same on the left. Take your left cord of white, go around those two horizontal pieces, so go on top of them, down through the middle, around, but instead of 
going to the right, you're going to be coming up through the middle and you're becoming on the left side of your working cord. Next you're going to take your red and you're going to do the same exact thing. Take it on the right side, go over and around those two horizontal black pieces, go down through the middle, go up through the middle, and then go in between the red and the white. So you're on your right side of your working cord. Take the one on the left, go over, down through the middle, and around those two horizontal black pieces, and then come up between the red and the white. and be on the left side of your working cord. Next we have the last black pericord and what we're going to do for these strands is we're going to cross them over. So I like to cross my right over my left then my left is on my right and my right became on my left and it makes a crisscross right there. And now I'm going to take the cord on my right now and I'm going to do the same thing that I just did with the red and the white. I'm going to go over those two horizontal pieces and around. And come up on the right side of the cord that you're working. I got a little twisted up there, sorry. There we go. So you're on the right side, you're between the red and the black and you're on the right side of your cord that you're working. Now do the same thing you've been doing on the left. Go around those two horizontal pieces and come up on the left side. And you can see you have this crisscross right here. Now you can tighten everything up. And now that it's tightened up, we can just start the weave over again. So I'm going to take that bottom black and I'm going to go under the first cord, up through the middle, and over the second cord. I'm going to take my cord on the left and I'm going to go under my working cord that I just worked. And I'm going to go under the first cord, over the second cord, so up through the middle and then over. I'm going to take my red that's next and I'm going to go underneath all my work, up through the middle, and down to that loop. Do the same on the left. Go underneath everything up through the middle, and down that loop. My white is next. I'm going to go over my work over those two horizontal pieces, down through the middle, and then up through the middle. So I went around those two horizontal pieces and then up through the middle on the right side of the cord. Take my left white and go over those two horizontal pieces, down, around, and then back up on the left side of my cord. Take my red that's next, do the same thing, go around those two horizontal pieces, down, around, and up on the right side, on the left side, go over, down, around those two horizontal pieces, and up on the left side. Take my right black cord. Go over the left cord. Now take the cord that's going to be on my right. Go over those two horizontal pieces, up and around. The same on the left. Go around those two horizontal pieces, up and around. And you can just pull it tight. So you're going to continue this weave all the way down the collar. 
I'm going to do a few more and show you what the pattern starts to look like. So I'm a few down and you can see how the pattern is forming. You have the black crisscross in the middle, then you have the red, the white, the red, and then you have the black that is on the sides right here. I think it looks really good with the black in the middle because the, of the bio theme coming out right in the middle. So I do like how that's looking so far. I'm going to continue this pattern all the way down until I have to do my tie off. And I am really sorry if you guys can hear Sander crunching in the back. He had um, a specialty treat and unfortunately Sander does not have his back molars. He had them pulled uh, a couple months ago so it takes him a lot longer to chew on a pig's ear. Uh, so if you hear him chewing in the background, I do apologize. Again, I'm just going to continue this pattern all the way down, and then when I am finished, I'll show you guys how to do the tie-off, and um, tell you how well it was working with the adapter put together on the jig. Alright, I'm at the end of my collar, and we can weave in the ends, and then um, finish off the tie-off. So the ends that I'm going to be weaving in are the white, the red, and the black on both sides at the top of your, uh, at the top of the collar. So with my white, I'm going to be um, weaving it through this gap that I have right here. This is between the two cow's hitches and the body of my work, and I'm going to be sticking it through that gap. And I'm going to be doing that with both white and both red pieces. After you have your red and white weaved in, you're going to want to do the two top um, black cords that you have. And you're going to do these ones a little bit different. You have a small gap between the two cow's hitches. You're going to want to go through that tiny gap with the cord that is on your left side, pull it through to the other. Now, what you're going to do now is you're going to take your right black cord and you're going to go in that same hole, but you want to be on the left side of the cord that you just put through. And that's so you make that last um, weave crisscrossed. Now we can cut and burn everything. I like to start on my sides. So what you're going to want to do is go about a quarter of an inch up from the collar and cut the cords. You're going to want to free these out just a little bit. Um, it, I think it makes a better cap that way. You're going to burn them and you're going to squish them down with something metal. I am using a butter knife. You just want to burn them really lightly. You can see here that they're both flat and you want to do the same on the opposite side. Now that I have both sides done, I'm going to do the middle and I am going to start with the two in the middle, the two reds that are in the middle and then I'll do the white and then the black. Once you finish cutting everything and, and burning it, um, you can use the collar as it is. I do put on Gorilla Non-Foaming Clear Glue and that's just a bit of security that everything um, with the tie-off is going to stay put. 
But if you don't have this, you can use your collar like this. Like I said, it's just like an added security for me. I do use the, this glue on my leashes and my collars. You don't need to put a whole bunch if you do use the glue. It doesn't have to be a lot. And I just like to do it on the areas where I just cut everything on all the caps and stuff. The glue takes about 4 to 12 hours to dry. It depends on where you live and how much humidity you got going on. Uh, I live in Colorado and we don't have a lot of humidity. So this will probably be dry by definitely by tonight. If you leave your biothene on like I did, be very careful that um, you don't touch your biothene with your glue on your hands. So just be careful of that. But like I said, if you don't use the glue, then you're done and you can just go put it on your dog. And uh, that's really it. So I'm going to let this dry and then I'll show you guys what it looks like after it's dried.